welcome back to Carry On Creating. This is episode four, I think, um, if, if I'm right. And uh, I just wanted to jump on here and have a chat about some things that happened this weekend. We were showing a lot of different clients their images. Uh, we ended up with a lot of viewings. For us, we do in-person viewings where they come in to sit and see the pictures in more of a gallery style. Uh, we do this for a couple of reasons. One, it's better to talk to people face to face. It is always better for that. Uh, and secondly, we like seeing their reaction. We actually enjoy showing clients uh, the images and seeing what they think and going through that. Um, I know some studios do proof sheets, some studios do online viewings, online galleries, uh, or just send the files, whatever it is. There's there's lots of ways that people do it. But for us, it's, it's in-person viewings that we prefer. Um, usually this is a week or so after the shoot. Sometimes it's the same day if we've got time to do that. But because of what goes into our work and we'll only show finished images, it's not always the quickest process. So yeah, so we had quite a lot of those this weekend and a, a big contrast. So we had the first one um, was one I did and it was a, a flower shoot where we had all flower things and things and mum just broke down crying because she was obsessed with the images and she loved them. And that is the best reaction we can possibly hope for. It, it is the absolute best reaction because to make someone actually feel something uh, emotionally when they look at your work is, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like that feeling. Um, I always tell students when I go and do talks at, at unis and whatever and colleges that one of the best feelings is that your work is out there on someone's wall. And that is true. But I actually think there's there's something maybe more in having someone have an actual physical reaction to one of your images. Uh, there's, it's lovely. It's lovely. And she was lovely and she loved it. And she appreciated photography. She appreciated what went into it. She didn't have an understanding, but she understood the technical um, level needed to produce work like that. Uh, and it was just an absolute delight, really an absolute delight. And then on the flip side of that, we had a, a view where, again, everyone's lovely. You never have any problems. But you, we had someone who was a photography enthusiast um, and was interested, but unfortunately didn't really have all the knowledge needed and was the attitude was not fantastic, let's say the least. It was more, um, well, I can, I can print. I've got a camera. I can do this. And I think, well... I, I, it suddenly makes you feel as a photographer that you're trying to con them or that they feel you're trying to con them because they're going, well, I can do this and I can do that. And you think, well, that's fine. <laughs> but I, I, this is my art. This is my style. This is what I create. Um, and you also booked me and you came here. So <laughs> strange. <laughs> so it, it's really hard when people do that and you get all sorts of answers and they just make themselves they're normally wrong and I don't mean that and then they're just completely wrong I mean but they don't have enough information to understand what's really gone into it so you'll get something like about printing and I'll say well we I have a really good printer I bought a home and you go that's lovely but if your printer isn't calibrated to your screen in the way that the files are you know ours is produced here created here printed here you're not going to get it exact match as we would even with the best printer ever it, it would need telling what to do and you get the same with the, i have a really good camera i've just bought this camera um firstly i always find when people say that it's never actually the biggest best camera that's come out it's just a camera they consider expensive but i always come back with the same thing go, oh, well, i've got a really good oven but i'm not a baker you know i've got a really good pencil but i'm not an artist it's, it's these sort of things where people, why, why do we associate the tools with photography as to being able to do the job? You, you just literally would not do that in any other profession. Can you imagine being like, oh, yeah, I've got a really good hammer I just bought, so I'm definitely a builder now. It, it just seems absolutely mad. And photography is so unregulated with stuff like that anyway. Obviously, if you were going to be a builder, you were going to go off and do a lot of other jobs, you would need qualifications or you would at least need to sort of be able to put yourself out there in a safe way. With photography, it's become a thing where anyone can pick up a camera and call themselves a photographer. And I find that really odd because, I mean, there's a lot of drama online um, in the wedding photography community about a photographer who 
um, put out about her pricing. She was quite pricey is what everyone thought. Um, but a lot of her work was uh, artistically blurry images. Um, and that just caused absolute havoc. <laughs> that just caused, <coughs> so excuse me, that just caused absolute havoc online. Um, but a lot of the comments and a lot of the things people were uh, saying were, was also they didn't understand photography either. Now, I'm not jumping to her defense or not, but it, it was weird how how much you saw a lot of people going, well, I'm a photographer and I wouldn't dream of charging that. You can get all images with me for just $50. And you're like, well, you don't make yourself sound that much better. You're not <laughs> you're not sounding like, oh, my God, these people are taking the mick because They've got their own overheads and values and prices and it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. So I think with photography being so accessible these days, we leave ourselves open to people thinking they understand what our job is. And for me as a photographer, I, I think, OK, challenge accepted. I used to hate this. God, the, the one time someone said they're into photography, I thought, Jesus, do not ask me how many megapixels my camera has or what lens I'm using or why I'm doing it because, um, not because I didn't know, but because it, it was a case of I'm doing a job. I'm trying to work with their children or whoever, and they're asking me about tech. And I'm like, lovely, but let's have this discussion when I've done my job. If you let me get back to it, it's just the worst. It's the absolute, absolute worst when when that happens. So yes if, if anyone's watching this and you're going for a shoot don't ask them don't do it but with that being so accessible i would now argue back i'm quite happy now to argue back with essentially just facts just what it is why we charge what we charge why um, I do what I do. Why artistically I decided that that image is better in black and white or I've done this or I've done that. And then they can make their decision and that's fine. But they at least have all the information that I've given them uh, within it. Uh, the customer's always right. I'm not a believer in that. Um, I, I believe, you know, you want to keep people happy and that makes sense. But I'm not a believer that they always have to be right. I think the customer should always be educated and then they can make their decisions. Um, then they can do it. We, I once had a client who, this is a weird one. So she came in, she booked uh, a shoot for her two daughters. She loved all the work. We did the shoot. The daughters enjoyed it. Everyone had a great time. Everyone loved it. She came back. She saw the images. She loved them. She bought a 30 inch canvas of one of the images. She thought it was amazing. Everything was good. Then she comes to pick up. And she came to pick up and she uh, she said, oh, oh, the background's grey. I said, yes, yeah, yeah, it was it's the same colour as when you saw it. Do you want me to show you the original image? Um, I said, yeah, it's a, it's grey. We did it to match the girls' grey jumpers and all of this, you know. And I was going over going, is this a problem? Have I missed something? Um, and she said, oh, I assumed it would be white. And I'm thinking, have I missed a note? Did you tell me? Is there something I've not done? Uh, and I'm going back and I'm going, I can't find any notes. Did you ask? And she went, oh, no, I, I didn't ask for it to be uh, white. I just assumed because all professional images have a white background. So I assumed you'd edit it white to make it look more professional. Right. OK, so. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. I had nothing I could do with that. I. And that, this is years ago. Of course, I did that. The customer's always right. Oh, don't worry. I'll go and edit it. I'll produce another 30 inch canvas and it will be fine. If that happened these days, it would be, uh, no, look at my portfolio. Look at everything on the wall. I did say that to her then that, you know, you look at my work, none of it had a white background. So why would she expect this one to have a white background? Seemed really daft. Um, but she got really like aggy about it. And that's one of my first experiences of thinking, you know what, the customer's not always right. Um, nah. I mean, that's a whole podcast in itself going on the customers and, and the things that have happened uh, going from that. But this is this is just back to showing pictures. Uh, but I suppose that's a similar a similar thing, showing that finished product and her opinion on it. And you think that it doesn't make any sense. So. These things don't bug me as much as they used to. I think age plays a big part in that. Um, I've been doing this 17 years. I started very young 
and I've I've been in every situation you can possibly think of uh, with showing people photos. Um, I don't think I've ever had anyone who actually didn't like anything. Uh, I've had a couple of people who um, wanted to be over edited a little bit too much. Um, and so they didn't like themselves, but no one that I can think actually didn't like any, any images, but we've had all sorts and you deal with everything and you gain a very thick skin, but you don't gain it quickly. It does come over time and it, it takes a lot of time to get used to hearing people's, hearing people's critique on your work when they're not in the industry to have understood why we've made these decisions. Something that we all do, we go to the photography show, we go to uh, events, we go to camera clubs, we, we look online, we inspire ourselves, we learn our craft. But some of the more arty techniques that we know are um, incredibly hard to master can just be not appreciated by the general public at times. And you've got to remember that it's not doesn't have to be everyone's taste. You don't have to be everyone's taste. Some photographers combat this by finding their client and niching down and only having the right people coming through. Um, I, that's not my approach. For me, it's about m me developing and learning how to deal with these people. Obviously, there's certain people we don't want coming through, but most of the time it's about me uh, developing who I am and how I can handle these interactions and these people because that's going to be the best uh, way I can grow uh, and learn as well learn how to do it because maybe I can communicate to this person who doesn't like black and whites and maybe I could change their mind or open their mind or maybe just educate them on something they didn't know before um, instead of just thinking well you know I don't agree with you you don't agree with me that's that you know, maybe we, we could actually open the discussion. It's it's our job to educate our clients. It's the worst thing. I know it's awful. It's annoying um, that we are the ones that have to educate them, that we're not scamming them and that we are doing this, <laughs> this system that we want to, you know, show our skill sets and we're putting a lot into it. And no, we do not just click a button. So it is up to us. It is up to us to educate. And we have to remember that sometimes. Uh, so... I think we're like I've ranted again. I've just gone on and rambled on. And that seems to be what these are becoming. It's going to be so much better when I've got people to talk to if I let them get a word in edgeways. That is, uh, it's going to be so much better to have that bounce uh, back between and um, start getting other people's opinions. So thank you for joining me. This is Carry On Creating. I will be uh, coming up with quite a few of these podcasts soon because we have the photography show coming up. I have a lot of really fun guests coming up on the show and I can't wait to take you on this journey. So carry on creating, keep going, and I will see you soon.